Hello team, happy Monday to you. Hopefully when you listen to this, the audio is not too bad, but my audio recording platform, for some reason, no idea why, has uh, kind of shit itself a little bit. So I'm not happy with that, but you know, we're doing what we can with the, um, with the, what's this called? The iPhone microphone, so we'll see how we go. Um, fun story for you guys first before we get started. I now have a lifespan treadmill. So first I had the Fortis T3, I think it was, and that was the one I was raving about, telling everyone about it, you gotta get it, which again, I still recommend it. But it was probably mm, two weeks ago now, I was walking on the treadmill and I was like, oh, I could smell like something burning. And I was like, what the fuck is that? And I was like, I was like, babe, I called out to Angie. I was like, can you smell something? And then she came in, she goes, yeah, something smells like burning hair. And I was like, hmm, that smells that's weird. And um. I was like, oh, I don't know what it is. And then she's like, I think it's a treadmill. I'm like, nah, it's not the treadmill. Like, why would it be the treadmill? And then um, I got off and I I went down near the motor and I smelt it. I'm like, oh, fuck, yeah, it's a treadmill. I like quickly pressed stop. I was like, hmm, that's weird. And I put my hand on the top of it and I was like, fuck. Like, it was so hot. And I was like, what the hell's going on here? So I let it go for like half an hour, came back. And I was like, maybe it was just, you know, I don't know what was going on. So I unplugged it, <clears throat> came back. An hour, uh, half an hour later, plugged it back in, turned it on again, and then I just like had it running slow and I put my hand on the motor to see if it was heating up and I could feel it heating up and smelling like a burning again. I'm like, all right, this is something's wrong with this. So I opened it up. Uh, it's a it's a bitch to open up. Like if you pull this apart, you ain't putting it back together basically. So I was like, oh, I'll just have a sass. Pulled it apart. The amount of cat hair that had accumulated in the motor was ridiculous and it was short circuiting and burning the cat hair. So I literally could have had a fire in my room full of fucking cat hair on my treadmill. And I was like, holy, like I couldn't believe it. Hey, and the amount of cat hair I kept pulling out, I was like, Jesus. So tips for you that have, for you people that have treadmills at home and you have pets, check your treadmills basically. They're quite, if you, if you haven't thought it, it's gonna be a bit of a bitch to be able to pull out, um, to pull apart. Uh, so, you know, either get a blower, like an air blower that you can blow in through or try and get a vacuum and put it at where the front of the treadmill is and try and just put your vacuum down there to see if you can suck up anything that might be in there. Um, or if you can pull it apart and put it back together, go for it. But now that I have a lifespan, I got a lifespan one because I can pull apart the top very easily. So now I'm just doing more routine, routine maintenance, making sure the bloody cat hair isn't getting trapped in there. So there you go. Dangerous, dangerous things, cat hairs, aren't they? <laughs> but... That's enough of the story. Today's topic, we are going to be talking about uh, just consistency, the black and white mindset. It is gonna be more of a mindset topic today and just helping you guys kind of understand the whole role of consistency and what that means and what that looks like just in life overall, right? Because I think a lot of people, we still do have this black and white mentality, which is easy to fall into. We have kind of this, you know, pass or fail or like, you know, success or failure type of thing. And we are very e quick to write off something if it's not 100% perfect or whatever it is. Or again, if something happens in the short term, we get very up in our head about it and we think that everything's been ruined, that we failed everything and you know what's the point? And so I want to kind of help change that mindset with you guys today because it's such a easy mentality to fall into, but it's such a destroying mentality to fall into. You know, like we... Uh, self-sabotage because of that, basically, all right? So helping you guys kind of understand what consistency is overall and what that looks like and how we apply that and something you can actually start to work towards will benefit you in the long run. Now, also I'm saying this, this isn't gonna happen overnight. It's not like, oh yeah, I've changed my mindset. I'm a consistent person. I'm not worried about perfection anymore. I'm changing all that. That doesn't happen. I wish it did because it would make my life a lot easier because I still fall into that trap a little bit. But it is just also about, um, you know, I guess, you know, being more self-forgiving and then having that longer term perspective, which is what you guys just need to understand because, you know, I always come back to saying health and fitness is for life. It's not a fucking 12-week challenge. It's not any of those things. It's something you are continuously practicing. And so when we look at this over the long term, it helps us get a bigger, bigger, better picture of not being so short-term focused and not realizing that short-term things aren't gonna have a huge consequence on the long-term factors we play, right? So one thing that I have been saying a lot recently, and I'm loving this quote, is that we are a reflection of our daily behaviors, okay? The things we do on a day-to-day -day basis, no matter how big or how small, they add up, and they add up a lot, you know? And it does again, it doesn't matter how small it is, 
it becomes a behavior that is repeated again and again, and it is basically solidified. Like our brain is always looking for shortcuts with how we can, well, this is basically what habits are, right? It is a shortcut for the brain to not have to think, okay? So when we do all these little behaviors all the time, these little shortcuts that we take, these little things that we do, and we kind of you know cheat uh, by making these habits, they're very hard to break because now we have that shortcut in the brain and the body and the brain is always trying to save energy, save mental energy, right? So when we try and make these uh, adjustments, these daily habits, all these things, at first it does take a lot of effort, but then it becomes second nature and you don't think about it as much. Now the good thing about being aware about this is thinking about all those little things you do on a daily basis, when they become habits, it's also great, especially when they're healthy, good habits, for when you break those things and you go and you know you go off and you have a holiday or you go off and you have a big weekend or whatever it is, if you have healthy behaviors in place, you come back and you crave that routine, you crave those behaviors, and it's very easy to fall back into good behaviors now because you've built those things up which is why I am very habit focused, you know, ticking off the daily boxes with your fruits, your veggies, your whole grains, you know, plants and protein at every meal, all these things, because the more you practice it, the more it just becomes ingrained. And like I said, when you do come back from wherever you've been, it's not as much effort to try and start doing that again, because the brain wants that shortcut. It wants that to be able to fall back into those simple habits. So it's not requiring a lot of mental energy all the time. You know, and that's actually why when you try and create new habits, that's also a challenge because the brain and body is so used to these old things we were doing and it wants to resort back to that because it's easy. It's easier than changing something. So even though it's a lot of effort at the start to change your daily behaviors to be better, let's say, it's very, um, yeah, it's more challenging. Once they're solidified, it's harder for them to break. Okay, so that's why it works both ways for good and for bad habits. And a perfect example is like getting up and going for a morning walk. If you get up and you go for a morning walk every single day, let's say for 100 days straight, you went up and you went for a 20 minute walk every day. Let's say day number 101, you went somewhere else. Uh, Like, you know, you stayed somewhere overnight. You wake up and you couldn't go for a walk. It would feel weird not going for a walk. And like, it's just a walk, right? But it's like your brain, your body is like set up for that schedule at that specific time. And so you're like, oh, fuck, this feels odd, like that I'm not doing this. And it just feels off. And you can't explain why, like it's just a fucking morning walk, man. Like what's the big issue? But it's something that the body is very habitual about. And it's like, it's like having those routinized behaviors, okay? And so this is a good thing because when we do fall off track, which is what will happen, when we have life happen, it's not about the small minority of things. It's about the consistency and what we do a majority of the time. And one way we like to, I like to look at this is over the year, okay? So over the year, we have 365 days, 12 months of the year, basically, 52 weeks, okay? If you are adherent, 85% plus of the year, you're going to see really good results, okay? What that kind of looks like when we say 85%, that's about 10 months of the year, okay? Um, is that right? Yeah, about 10 months of the year or eight weeks of the year. And when we look at that overall, when we break up those eight weeks, it actually kind of lines up quite well. We have Easter, Christmas, birthdays, if you go on a holiday, um, social events towards Christmas parties and stuff like that. All in all, it's anywhere between, I'd say six to 10 weeks is what most people have out of routine, I guess. As a general, as a generality, you know, there are definitely people who travel more for work and stuff. There are people, definitely people who can holiday more and stuff like that. Like fucking awesome if you can. But as a general rule, six to 10 weeks is usually where people are kind of out of rhythm and routine. But then you're at work doing the same old shit in your regular routine, doing all those things for 85% plus of your time. Mm -hmm. So with this, this is a good little guide to go off because If 85% of your year is you focusing on good habits, eating well, getting your steps in, training, all those type of things, you're going to make a lot of progress every year. You're going to get better. You're going to get healthier. You're going to get fitter, okay? And then when those other weeks that come up happen, 
you might feel like shit and you might be like, oh man, fuck, it's, you know, it's, it is what it is. Oh, I want to get back in a routine. Oh, I feel bad. But then when you get back in your routine and you keep going on, you're going to realize those weeks, those week offs or whatever they are, they're not as detrimental at all, really. However, this is where people get stuck in the consistency side of things with their bad behaviors. What do most people do? For the majority, for the majority of the time, it's the opposite. It's going out every weekend and drinking and eating shit food. It's ordering Uber Eats four times a week or six times a week or whatever it is. It's choosing more shitty behaviors and that's where they're falling down with the consistency. Well, actually, they're being quite consistent with shitty behaviors, okay? Because again, if we look at 85% of your year, what's that in... um. Okay, let's say 40 40 weeks of your year, you are going out, you are drinking, you are overeating, you are partying hard, you are sleeping in on a Sunday, you aren't doing anything else but ordering Uber Eats every Sunday and having a hangover. If that's more than, if that's like fucking 40 weeks of your year, well then no shit, you're not gonna, you're gonna continuously be on the same vicious cycle, okay? Even if that's 30 weeks of your year and 20 weeks aren't, that's a large majority, Right? Even if it's 50-50, 25 weeks you're going out, 25 weeks you're staying in, it doesn't unfortunately work in your in, to your advantage. Like, it's shit, but being healthy and fit requires a majority, you know? But that doesn't take away from your life, okay? Like, if you can go out and you can have a few drinks, and then you get up and you still do everything normally on a Sunday, you still get your steps, you still you do your meal prep, you know, you still focus on healthy habits on a Sunday, then you can have that balance. And that's what I encourage to people. Like when you drink, uh, sorry, when you drink, when you diet, it's a totally different story. I'm not talking about dieting here at the moment. When you diet, you should be just fucking, you know, you've got to focus, you've got to get this shit done. I'm talking about people who are finished dieting, you know, or you don't need to diet and you're working on maintaining these healthy, good behaviors for the rest of your life. This is what like a year needs to look like overall because this is what realistically is going to happen. Okay, you're a fucking normal person like me. We go out, we socialize, we have fun, we do all these things. Okay, you're not a fucking crazy, obsessive, I'm gonna never do social events again, all I'm gonna do is focus on my physique, all I'm gonna do is focus on training, I'm gonna let it obsess my life. If you wanna do that, that's fine. But I'm talking to a normal person who wants to be healthy and fit, but still wants to be able to enjoy themselves. And this is what I want you to understand here. This is what balance looks like for health and fitness overall, okay? So with that, right, should you drink at maintenance? To maintain the rest of your life, should you drink? That's totally up to you, right? If drinking continuously causes you to, again, have a shitty weekend, you drink, you binge eat after, you go get a kebab, whatever it is, you have like 7,000 calories worth of just overall calories, I guess, you know, between alcohol and food on a Saturday night, then you're hungover on a Sunday, you do fuck all, then you order Uber Eats and you you don't move and you eat like shit on a Sunday. What what do you think's going to happen if you continuously do that? You're going to obviously gain weight, which is not what you want, right? So having self-awareness first is, you know, knowing how you can handle that. And so for me, that's why I still go out and socialize. I'll still go out to friends' birthdays. I'll still go and do things, but I just don't drink as much. Like I pick and choose my battles because again, I'm a binge drinker. I will fucking get slaughtered. And annoyingly now, I only will like to drink cocktails because I never understood people like, oh, you know, cocktails. But I'm like, oh, fuck off, man. Like cocktails, I'm just going to have a vodka Coke Zero or a whiskey Coke Zero. I had cocktails in Thailand, changed my life, man. Cocktails are lit. I agree with you guys. They're fucking delicious. But guess what? Full of sugar and full of alcohol. Like easy calorie bombs, okay? So for me, still a majority of the time, I don't drink. Even just doing me, not trying to diet or anything. I just don't drink. I was out with friends on the weekend. Um, went to a wedding. Went to um, my sister-in-law's uh, birthday party. Didn't drink at either of those events. Stayed out until 12 o'clock, which was a late one for me. Man, I was fucking, I was done by 8 p.m. obviously. But stayed out till 12 both nights. Got to have fun. Got to enjoy myself. Got to chat with people. Didn't require drinking. Everyone else was getting slaughtered. I was fine, right? That's just knowing myself. And this is the balance that I have. Then, yeah, what was it, like a month ago, my friends, my two of my closest friends got married. Of course, I'm getting mortaled, you know? And I got absolutely slosh. 
but it's about consistency, you know? If I drink once every six to eight weeks, all right? But then for the rest of the time, I'm not blowing out my calories, I'm keeping quite on point, I'm eating well, I'm doing all those other things, what do you think is gonna happen? Like one, let's say once every two months, once every six weeks, let's just give me less, less benefit of the doubt. Let's say once every six weeks, I go out and drink, blow out, right? For that one day every six weeks, which is uh, every 42 days, so one out of 42 days, I go out and I get drink and get sloshed, and I overeat and I blow out my calories. What do you think is gonna happen one every 42 days? Absolutely fucking nothing, right? Because guess what I do the next day? I do what I've got to do. I get back on track. Like I even po I post every Sunday. Every time I go out on a Saturday night, I will post Sunday to show you guys that I'm in the fucking gym doing what I need to do. That I'm getting my steps out, right? That I'm going to get food shopping. That I'm doing my meal prep. That I'm doing all those things. Because just because I feel like shit on a Sunday, which is also self-inflicted, does not mean that I don't fucking do anything. Okay? And because I love the habit of now making a Sunday my Monday, like love having Sunday as my Monday, but it's also just like showing up for myself because I've got healthy behaviors that I wanna be consistent with. And if I do those, I do not let one bad day turn into two bad days, which is also an important thing. But secondly, I'm not gonna have any ramifications from one big weekend every few weeks, every six weeks or so, you know? And then I just get back on with my life. The scale jumps up, of course it's gonna jump up. And then it trends back down during the week because you get back on track with your behaviors. And this is the cool thing about maintenance. You are like, maintenance is more forgiving, okay? You have a big weekend once every few weeks. This is the important thing about maintenance and about maintaining for the rest of your life. And the important thing here is every few weeks, if it's gonna be big, it's every four to six weeks. It's not every fucking second week. All right, because unfortunately, you and I both know that you can blow out a weekend very easily and you know eat fucking 10,000 calories plus between cal um, drinks and al uh, between alcohol and food. It's easy to do. We all know how it's done, all right? So we don't do that shit. We don't do it every second week because that's going to fuck you up. But we don't do it at, we don't not do it at all because this is a flexible lifestyle. This is the balance here, okay? So once a month, once every six weeks, once every eight weeks, you know, for me, I am just can't party that much. So it's very six to eight weeks. And then it's only, it's basically only for one day, okay? So when I say big weekend, like for me, weekend is probably like, let's say like, you know, my Saturday is a write-off. I still do my steps. I still train. If I'm going to go out on a Saturday night, I'm still doing my steps. I'm still training. I'll go out and have fun Saturday night, Saturday night my big weekend, my like fucking what, six hour, maybe 10 hours if that. Sunday, I get up, I go do my steps, I go to train, I go do my food prep and that's all it is, all right? Because that's like fucking good. That's a good habit that I've ingrained. I can definitely party. Like you ask my friends, oh, does Tyson party hard? Yes, Tyson will fucking get on it and go hard, right? But at the same time, people go, how the fuck are you up on a Sunday doing what you need to do? Because I've got the, I don't want to say discipline because it is a discipline, but it's a discipline I built up by ingraining those good habits and behaviors, okay? And so I'm not letting one, like, again, if I was to have a shit Sunday and do nothing and lay around and order Uber Eats and stuff like that, of course it's going to happen. And it's going to creep up slowly, my weight, and I'm going to fall into bad behaviors. And it's very easy to unravel that, but that's why we. I just have like a little set guideline to myself that I make sure I never let, you know, no matter how shit I feel on a Sunday, I still go out and I get some sun, I still get some steps, I'm still going to have my food prep, okay? I may not train because I might just be exhausted, but I still go get my steps done, right? And so when we have these good behaviors set in for ourselves. This is what like maintaining life is all about. You get the fun stuff, but you still got your good behaviors. And the thing about good behaviors is they make you feel good. When you eat well, you fucking feel good. When you move, you got good mental health and you feel good. You know, when you sleep well, you feel refreshed. God, surprise, surprise. And you feel refreshed and you have energy to do stuff. And that's why like a lot of us, we crave that good feeling. And it's funny because there's no black or white when it comes to food, like good or bad food. But when we say bad food, we obviously have a general idea. If you eat a dense, greasy, shitty meal, even though it tastes fucking good, do you not feel like shit after? Because I do. I wake up sometimes like I'm fucking hungover from all the salt and stuff that I've had. 
Like a few weeks ago, Angie and I went and got burgers. And like, I oh mean, when I get burgers, I get like a fat burger. There's a place called Loaded by BL in um, Sydney or Bar Luca. Man, they did the, the deliciousest of this burgers. And so I got that. It's like, you know, just the, the combination of adding everything on there. I got some onion rings. We got some loaded fries. Like we went fucking good food, you know? Um, I woke up Saturday morning and I was like, oh my God. Like I felt like groggy and hungover. And I'm like, this is why I only do this once every four to six weeks. Like, because I like the, the shitty food. There's nothing wrong with having shit food once every now and then, but it's a once every now and then thing, okay? It's not getting Uber Eats six nights a week or, you know, three nights a week or whatever it is. It's like the majority of the time we are keeping that consistency. And this is how we change that black and white mentality, okay? So, you know, with that, if we always think, if we always have in our mind consistency over perfection, okay, or like 85% is what I always try and aim for, 85% for me, because that's like, that's the flexibility of maintenance. When you're dieting, you need to be a little bit more adherent, like 85 to 90%. With maintenance, you know, same thing with your diet, 85% of your food should be whole nutritious filling. Most of you on maintenance are going to be anywhere between 2,400 calories and above, Okay. 2,400 calories, and let's say the 85% rule, give or take, you've got like, what, 400 calories of fun food, okay? Fun food. Well, I'm doing quotes here, fun food. And then 2,000, good, whole, nutritious, good tasting food. If you're someone who has oats, uh, has protein oats every morning, that tastes good, right? But that's not like the fun food. You know, you might get a piece of chocolate later on during the day, or you might have uh, an ice cream. Like, oh man, I'll tell you guys right now, the um, oh, connoisseur has a new one. Is it salted pretzel or salted caramel? It's fucking delicious, okay? 300 calories for that ice cream. Let's say that's your that's your nighttime indulgence. And the rest of your meal still have like, you know, quote unquote, fun food, but it's not like an indulgent food, okay? Again, some of you put Biscoff in your fucking protein oats. All right, cool, you have Biscoff there. But you're getting your fruits, you're getting your veggies, you're getting your whole grains, you're getting your protein, you're getting your dairy, you're getting all those things that are just good for health, okay? Like you tick off all those benchmarkers, you have 85% of that food coming from whole nutritious food that still tastes good. Like people are like, oh man, you have 4,500 calories. What a dream that is. I bet you eat all the good stuff. And then when I show people a day of my eating, everyone's like, oh, that's pretty boring. I'm like, fuck man, you don't have much. I'm like, yes, I know. Because my food tastes good, even though it's healthy. Like people disassociate healthy and like tasting well. Like a steak with veggies, as if that fucking doesn't taste good. Like I do loaded potatoes now. Like I do, uh, so what you do, stole this from Aussie Fitness Cookbook, right? It's like potatoes, Ch uh, light cheese, diced um, chicken, and then I also get a uh, one of those steam fry, steam fresh vegetable things, barbecue sauce, Bubba Ray's barbecue sauce, I think it's called, or Bullseye's barbecue sauce, Stubbs, Stubbs barbecue sauce. All right, very simple, okay? Roast the potatoes, pull them out, chuck the cooked chicken on the top, chuck the veggies on there, uh, like I just use peas and corn, chuck the melted cheese in there, put it in there for five minutes, come back out, loaded fries and potatoes, fucking delicious, right? Put a little bit of um, Stubbs barbecue sauce on there. That's like an eight out of 10 meal, like taste-wise. Oh, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with having a healthy meal? Because it's fucking healthy, right? Potatoes, veggies, chicken, like barbecue sauce, God forbid, light fat cheese, light fat cheese. What's that? Light cheese um, for my calcium. So I'm getting calcium. I'm getting protein. I'm getting f veggies. I was going to say fruits. I'm getting veggies. I'm getting um, fiber. I'm getting all those things. It tastes like an eight out of 10 meal, but it's healthy. Nothing wrong with that. And that's something I can eat all the fucking time, you know? Or another meal I have is a chicken pasta. I'm just stealing all of these recipes because they're very simple to eat. And I eat them on repeat because they taste good. They tick the boxes for overall health and they're easy to eat, okay? These are the things we want in maintenance. You want things that are enjoyable to eat, you're not eating too much bullshit food. You're ticking off all the habits and it's an easy lifestyle. It's not health and fitness over here or the good tasty food over here. Like obviously high processed greasy food is going to taste better. No shit. Okay. But guess what? An eight out of 10 versus a 10 or 11 out of 10, eight out of 10 is going to keep you satisfied. Not going to have you fucking overeating and doing bullshit stuff. Right? That's what we want. We want that balance. Because then when I feel like a fucking burger, every four to six weeks, I can go for the burger. 
Mm -hmm. Then when we think about, again, coming to this balance side of things, we have 28 meals a week. No, we don't. I'm lying. Is that right? Yes, 28 meals a week. Um, I just say, like, just for the grand idea, you guys have four meals a day, technically, or like, you know, three meals and a snack. I'm just saying you're eating four times a day. Maybe eat three times. Um, do not eat less than three times. You're eating three times, four times, five times, whatever it's going to be. I'm saying 28. 85% of that, that is uh, 21 meals. No, it's not. That's incorrect. 24 meals. Is that right? Yes, 24 meals, okay? 24 meals are home-cooked, pre-prepared, whatever they are. Like, you know, did you buy macro, Papa Macros, My Muscle Chef, or whatever? Did you prep them yourself? Or has it come somewhere that's not like, that's kind of within your control, I guess, for the most part, right? That's basically what we want. Food that's within our control, that's generally calorie control. Do you know what I'm saying? You know, if you cook it from home, you know what goes in there. If you get it from My Muscle Chef or a meal prep company or Coles Perform or whatever, you pretty much know what's in there, okay? 24 of your meals should be like that. Four of your meals are, are not, I'm saying off-plan meals. What I mean by off-plan meals is going out for breakfast, ordering Uber Eats, going out for dinner, maybe Uber Eats twice, whatever it is, you know? And then with them, they're not bullshit meals, again, okay? Like there's the difference between enjoying yourself having a bullshit meal once every four to six weeks, and it's not like exactly every four weeks you go and have a fucking bullshit meal, okay? Like please do not take these as exacts, but I'm giving you guys the idea of what maintaining a healthy lifestyle looks like for the long run. These four meals, if you order Uber Eats, I'm not ordering burgers on Uber Eats every fucking weekend as one of my off-plan meals. I'm ordering Guzman, because it tastes lit and it's still a good choice. I'm ordering fish bowl. I'm ordering the things that I tell people to fucking order eat, order when they diet. We're ordering Thai food. Um, at the moment, I'm getting uh, the Dombari. Oh, fuck, I love Dombari. Um, you're getting sap, not salmon, sushi, you know, things like that, okay? Like, I hate saying it, but it's like macro friendly, you know? Like, just non bullshit stuff. Less grease. Like, I'm not getting a pizza. I'm not getting KFC. I'm not getting fucking McDonald's. Now, you can get McDonald's if you want, you know, and you order the grilled chicken. And, you know, your family might all be getting the bullshit, and you're like, all right, I'll get the grilled chicken. Um, is it the chicken deluxe? Grilled chicken deluxe. Take the mayo away. Swap for barbecue sauce. Simple fix, you know, where you get like the Caesar salad with no fucking dressing. Easy. It's actually funny. You can literally just order chicken breast, grilled chicken breast, like on the menu. Like you can just order like multiple of them. So if you just want a grilled chicken breast and like get some dipping sauce. So like you get the McNugget dipping sauce. The Big Mac dipping sauce is good, by the way. So like, let's say your family's going to get this. Totally off tangent. Let's say your family wants Maccas. You're like, all right, sweet. Uh, I'm going to get some grilled chicken. So you get like three marinade grilled chicken things. Uh, you might make it like a, a, a burger. So you're like, hey, can I get a burger? A grilled chicken deluxe. I don't want any mayo on it. I want barbecue sauce instead. I want an extra uh, grilled chicken piece on there or an extra grilled chicken piece on the side. So you have a grilled chicken deluxe burger, sweet, slap that down, then you've got a piece of chicken. You chop up that chicken a little bit or shred it up, then you dip it in the Big Mac dipping sauce, you're having Maccas, the family's having Maccas, yours is controlled and not fucking you know, 2,000 calories worth of Maccas, because you get a Coke Zero too, but then you get chips, and they've got whatever they want. And then you have a few nibbles of the chips, right? Maybe you have like a handful or two of chips. But you don't stress about that, because you fucking, it's just a little bit, all right? That's flexible. But anyways, you choose some good foods when you order Uber Eats. You're going out for breakfast. What are you going to have? I just say get eggs on toast with some you know, mushrooms or bacon on the side, poached eggs, get the butter on the side, get some spinach or mushrooms or bacon on the side, get a coffee. Simple as that when you go out for breakfast. Or if you want, just get a coffee. Or basically just don't eat like a fucking idiot when you go to eat breakfast, you know? Like, don't get eggs benedict unless you want to have a thousand calories for breakfast. And again... If you want to have these things, this is where balance comes through, all right? This is the all or nothing mentality change. Yeah, let's say you do have eggs, Benny. You're like, I want, I want an eggs, Benny. Fuck Tyson, I want an eggs, Benny. All right, go get an eggs, Benny. Then for the rest of the day, you should, be, you should have a conscious thought, not I'm not going to eat for the rest of the day, not I'm not going to cut calories for the rest of the day, not oh, I blow my diet, I'm going to start again Monday. You just think, those eggs, Benny, were filling. Okay, like when I eat like a fatty food or like a high calorie stuff, like last week I got scrambled eggs with uh, hash, not hash browns, well they call them hash browns, 
but they're not actually hash browns. It's like just like chopped potato, fucking fried or whatever it is. And some bacon on the side. Like it was filling. Man, I was full for like six hours, right? So what did I do? I respected my hunger. I didn't eat until I was hungry again because I'm like, this is a calorie dense meal. I'm not going to purposely restrict. I'm not going to starve myself. I'll just wait till I'm hungry again. And then guess what I have for the rest of the day? Plants and protein. That was balance, right? But again, like sometimes it's just like, I'm like, fuck man, it's not worth the eggs, Benny. I'll just get the post eggs on toast. Because post eggs on toast always slap, you know? So I'll do that. So that's your second social meal. Third social meal, you go out for dinner. Whether I'm dieting or not, I look for a protein option. You know why? Because I fucking love steak. Or I basically love any main protein source for the most part. Like chicken, the way the way restaurants cook anything basically tastes fucking lit. A fish option, a beef option, a chicken option. Is there a duck option? Is there a, I don't know, that's about it. Any other protein option, okay? So we choose that. And guess what I do? I still swap my chips for um, potatoes and stuff like that. Because I'm like... I'll pick off chips off Angie's plate because she never finished. <laughs> I'm lucky. Angie doesn't finish her food. I'm always just guzz gutting her leftovers, right? So I'm always going to get some chips and stuff anyways. But for me, I'm like, oh, fuck, I'll get a baked potato. I'll get mashed potato. I'll get, I'll get veggies on the side. Like, it's just a habitual thing. And it's not like, oh, I'm dieting. I've got to watch my calories. Like, it's just what I actually enjoy, you know? And that's balance. And that's how you maintain your weight. They, you have that, that balance again. Again, majority consistency, 85% of your time, just eating whole nutritious food. 15% of your time, which is four meals a week, which is, um, what else? Oh, 15% of your time, is that right? Yeah, 15%, like, you know, four meals a week, uh, or yeah, every, every few weeks or few, like, you know, once a month or whatever it's going to be, it all comes back down to that 85, 15% rule. And there's no perfectionist mentality with that, okay? Because remember, on the day-to-day, you're still going to have things that are enjoyable that keep you on a diet that's sustainable for your life, you know? Like for me, I'm still fucking having cereal every day because I love cereal. And guess what? It helps me stay on track. That's like my, you know, quote unquote fun food. I have like 120 grams of cereal a day. It's like four servings of cereal, you know? Like that's my 80-20 for my dessert, basically. Um, and like, you know, when I have that, there's no, oh man, I had cereal today, I've been bad or shit like that. It's like, I've got the balance, I've got the groove. And that's what I want to try and show people. It's not this black and white mentality. It's not living like a fucking bodybuilder and weighing your food for the rest of your life because you're not doing that shit either. All right. You shouldn't fucking be weighing your food and stuff at maintenance. You've been weighing and tracking your food plenty of time. You should definitely know and be able to guesstimate your calories without tracking, without weighing. That's where you should be at maintenance too. I missed that part. Okay, but then let's get back to this whole, I'm sorry, I'll, you know, we'll come back to the, 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 the year, looking at the year, right? Eight, eight, uh, you know, six to 10 weeks of the year, let's just say eight weeks of the year. When I say those weeks are like not the best weeks, it doesn't mean the whole week is a fucking write-off where you don't need anything, you know? It's probably a majority of the week is still good. Like four to five days are good. Two days are going to be shit, all right? As we get closer towards Christmas, it's probably going to be a little few more days than two days, right? And three or four days, whatever it is. But it's not the seven days, like Monday to Sunday is just a shit week. And it's like, you know, let's say there's 10 weeks. It's not 70 days of the year where you're eating like shit or whatever. It's just like, again, on the weekend, you had a fucking big weekend. When you go on way of holidays, yeah, obviously overrate some calories and stuff like that, you know? You guys listen to my holiday one, obviously, I'm hoping you did, so you understand how that kind of works. You have Christmas time, you're obviously going to overindulge, you know, but it's not, again, it's not a seven-day fiasco of just eating whatever the fuck you want, and during this time, we don't switch off, we don't go, I'm not doing steps, I'm not exercising, I'm not doing anything, I'm not doing, like, you know, I'm turning off completely, I'm going to be a fat fuck, no, I don't want, when I say that, you know what I mean, okay, I'm not, not making fun of overweight people. I'm not calling them that. Like people who, you know, we say that shit to ourselves. Ah, oh, I'm just going to be lazy. I'm going to be this, okay? So that's what I'm trying to get in. I'm not trying to offend people. Fuck me dead. But that's what I'm saying. We don't do that, right? We make this a lifestyle. So it's like, let's say you haven't had the, let's say it's Christmas time. When I've made the podcast about Christmas, basically, that just happened. That week during Christmas, you know, from like the 23rd to the 30th, it's kind of a blur, you should still be training. You should still be getting your steps in. You should still be eating like a fucking adult, getting your fruits, getting your veggies, getting your protein. Like, it's not hard to eat fruits, veggies, and protein every day. And it's like, oh, Tice, 
What, you think every day I need to eat this? Like, give me a break. Give you a fucking break, man. Like, this. if you guys want a healthy lifestyle balance, that's what it is, all right? It's not get up and grind and go to the gym every day. It's not stick to your diet and never fucking give in or anything. It's like, eat your fucking fruits and veggies and your protein and go for a walk. Like, God forbid I'm trying to fucking tell people to be healthier. And again, like you have that fun lifestyle still. Like you want your cake and you want to eat it too. All right, sweet. This is how you do it. Oh, Tice, come on, mate. Like, fuck, I don't want to have to get my steps every day. Oh, what? Like, okay, fine. Don't. Fuck, don't, man. Don't. I don't care. Like all I'm trying to do is explain to you guys that it's not hard to be healthy and fit, to maintain the weight you've lost and to maintain a healthy weight and still have enjoyment in your life, right? It's just about having a majority of the time being good behaviors. And again, if I eat like shit, and I don't go for a walk, I'm going to feel worse for it. If I went for a walk and I was active, or again, I ate a big fucking meal on Christmas Day and I went for a walk, am I going to feel better after the walk? Or am I going to hate myself if I didn't go for a walk? I'm going to feel like shit, you know? So I go and do those things that still make me feel good. And that's all about the balance, okay? So again, you know, say it's a blur from the 23rd till the 30th. You're going to have Christmas Day, Boxing Day, probably um, Christmas Eve, where you're eating whatever the fuck you want to eat. Cool, three days. For the rest of the time, if you're eating quite well, apart from those three days, again, I'm not saying those three days that you're dieting or any of that shit, you're just eating well, all right? You might have a high calorie dinner, whatever the fuck. You have three indulgent days, you get back on track, you eat well. They're all gonna balance out over the year, and that's how you maintain your weight. But if it's like consistently higher calorie weekends and shit like that, things will go up continuously. Like, it, weight is a creeper, okay? And that's what people forget. They want to lose the weight fast. Oh, I want to lose it yesterday. Okay, well, fuck, did it come on yesterday? No, it crept up. It's because you had six weekends in a row where every weekend was a fucking blowout and you were good during the week. Like, you know, your weight spiked up. Like Perfect example for me. Last six weeks have been hectic. Weddings, birthdays, all those things, right? My weight would jump up after the weekend because, again, I was like, fuck, I'll be lax, whatever. My weight jumped up. It came back down during the week. It would jump up on the weekend. It would Sorry, it's every Monday. It would, like, jump up, come up, come back down, come up. But guess what? It trended upwards slowly. It went from 90 to 90.7 to 91.6 to 91.8. Like, it was just creeping up slowly. And I could look up my trend over time, and I put on two and a half kilos, Okay. Now, for me, two and a half kilos, I don't give a fuck. Like, it doesn't really bother me. And now I've wound it back in. I'm keeping maintenance. And now I'm just, like, my water weight's dropped back down a little bit. So technically, I've actually gained about one and a half kilos. But that's because my weekends were just a little bit more hectic. And even though I was, quote unquote, good during the week, I had too many weekends in a row where I was going too much, right? And this is where slow weight gain happens. So we need to keep an eye on those things and not letting all those weekends wind up. But we do get times in life where that shit happens, okay? This is where we come back to the consistency. I'm not like, oh man, I've had six weekends where they've been hectic. I'm going to diet. I'm going to try and pull off these one and a half kilos. Man, I can fucking lose these when things are quieter, when I'm done enjoying myself. I'm not going to go into this reactive behavior because I got to enjoy myself a little bit. No one gives a fuck I'm a kilo heavier, one and a half kilos, two kilos, God forbid, heavier. No one notices that shit, okay? However, if I was four, five, six kilos heavier because I let every weekend keep happening, then obviously there's an issue. So what have I done? I've just reined it back in, kept back the consistency. Surprise, surprise, my weight dropped back down a little bit. It's going to sit a little bit higher. Come Because right now, as I'm recording this, you guys are listening to this in January. This is actually November. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm not going to diet coming into fucking Christmas, man, because I'm one and a half, two kilos heavier. Fuck that. I'll wait till the start of the year. When there's no social events, when everyone else is trying to lose weight, I'll do a three-week diet, clean it up, easy peasy. That's what the fucking balance is, okay? And so this is where we want to take this. This is where we want this. If you guys are watching this on the camera, I'm like move my neck a little bit, like doing these head rolls. But this is what we want. This is the kind of the balance I want you guys to start thinking about. It's not about having the perfectionist mindset. It's about having the consistency mindset. And we continuously repeat the daily behaviors that are eating well, that are moving well, and that are doing it consistently for at least 80% of your time, guess what? You will be able to maintain what you've got. You'll actually make improvements in your overall health and fitness because you're doing the majority of the things that are well for you, and you still get to have the flexible lifestyle. 
How is that for a full circle? I fucking pulled that in really, really well. So yeah, I just want to talk to you guys about what that realistically looks like. Because I think a lot of people don't understand that. You know, they'll go through like, oh, do I have to bulk and cut now? Oh, do I have to be tracking my macros? Am I always going to be dieting? I'm like, fuck no, man. Like, lose the body fat. Build a good lifestyle, basically, you know? It's not like bulk and cut and, you know, unless that's your thing. Like, at the moment, I like to bulk and cut because it's my thing, right? But it's like, to maintain, you don't need to weigh and track your food all the time. You don't need it to consume your life. You just do regular exercise and movement and you eat well. And it may seem simple, but it is actually fucking simple. It's just that people who talk about this shit, like the bodybuilders and all those things, because they're so fucking neurotic and focused on having to do every little thing and I want this and this. That's not you. That's not me. We're normal people, man. You know? Again, if you want that lifestyle, then fucking cool. But like, I would way rather spend my time just on other shit that's not going to consume my life. You know? You do 10,000 steps a day, that's 100 minutes out of your day. Okay? You, pardon me, you exercise for like, let's say, let's say generally to get to the gym to come back home, let's just say it's two hours, okay? Two hours plus... 100 minutes, is that right? Yeah. 120, 300. Yeah, okay, so let's just say about 300 minutes, right? 300 minutes? No, that's wrong. I definitely fucked that up. Sorry about this, I'm having some mental blank. Let's just say you train once a day, four times a week, okay? Takes you an hour and a half to get to the gym, to get it all done, to train, to come home, okay? Hour and a half. Then you get your steps in for the day, which is, again, 100 minutes if you're doing dedicated steps, which you're not. Let's just say it's uh, 60 minutes of dedicated steps a day. So two and a half hours of your day dedicated to fitness out of a 24-hour day is 10% of your day. Boom, okay? Even if it was say 50, oh, this perfectly lines up with the 85% rule. 85% of your day is focused no, sorry, 15% of your day is focused on your movement and stuff like that. 85% of your day is done whatever the fuck you want to do, right? You know, work, sleep, all the other shit. That's balance. It's not consuming your life. You're not spending six hours a fucking day focusing on your health and fitness. You're spending 15% of your day, basically, give or take 10 to 15%, okay? You're spending 10 to 15% of your day focusing on the 85% rule. You keep it consistent. It's not consuming your life. You're maintaining a good physique, you're maintaining good health overall, and that's it. Kind of lost it there a little bit at the end, but I think I picked it back up. What I'm trying to get to you guys to understand is basically, if you want to be a fucking normal person, that's how you be a normal person. We don't obsess, we don't over, you know, we don't over analyze being perfect, we don't live in absolutes, we find the fucking balance, we find the things that work, and we do those things that are going to benefit us in the long run. So, Podcast done. I am feeling good. I am energized. Hope you guys got good, uh, I was going to say got good benefits, got a lot out of this. If you did enjoy it, I would love for you to share it on Instagram. Give me a tag. Tell me what you liked about it. And if you did enjoy this, please give me a rating and review on iTunes, if you're on iTunes or uh, Spotify, because I would really appreciate it. It always helps. And I'm just grateful for you guys tuning in, listening to what I have to say, putting up with my rambles and my rants and all the other shit. I appreciate you guys so much. And I'll speak to you next time.